Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of my series, A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. In this episode, we will be exploring how to deform our meshes in order to be able to create a terrain deformation game. Previously, we explored how to generate meshes through code, therefore in this episode, I will be using the mesh that is attached to a plane. However, these principles and the code itself can be applied to procedurally generated meshes. If you would like to see how to procedurally generate a mesh, please refer to episode 5. Before we start coding, let's understand what it is we are trying to do and how. Meshes are made up of triangles and vertices. We can amend the vertices by moving them up and down and then recalculate the triangles. Thankfully, the recalculation is handled by Unity. Therefore, we only have to focus on the vertices. Take this example of a mesh. If we click on a vertex, we can select it and drop its height. However, if we click on a triangle, how can we select the vertex? The simplest method to do this is by calculating the distance between the click and the vertices around us. Once we have the vertex selected, we can then apply code to increase or decrease its height. We can also specify a radius to select multiple vertices. Now that we have a better understanding as to what we're trying to do and how we're going to achieve this, let's jump into the code. In Unity, the first thing that we want to do is create an empty game object called Mesh Holder. Within that, we want to create a plane. If you're using this with procedurally generated terrain, you could simply attach this script, the mesh controller, to that object. Then I went ahead and created a material called terrain, which I've applied to the plane. I've also created a mesh controller script. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to want to do is define a few variables. First being the radius. Then we want a deformation strength. followed by a mesh where we will store our mesh and a vector 3 array called vertices and modified verts. Cool. To make this a lot simpler in our inspector within Unity, we can use the range function that will give us a sliding scale. So we do this by on top of our float radius, squared brackets, then range, followed by our range distance. For this, we'll do 1.5 to 5. We can do the same for our deformation strength. Now within the start function, we want to get and assign our mesh from our mesh filter. So we can do mesh equals to get component in children mesh filter dot mesh. Now that we've assigned our mesh, we need to assign our vertices. And we want a modified vert, which is what we will be applying. If you're wondering why we have the vertices and the modified vertices, that is so we can easily reset our mesh to its original vertices. And one last thing that we need to do is we need to create a function that we will use to recalculate our normals and assign our vertices. So we have a void recalculate mesh. Within this, the first thing that we need to do is assign our vertices. For this, we will assign our modified verts. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get our mesh collider. This will ensure that when we deform our mesh, the collider abides to what the mesh has become. So we can do a get component in children again, called mesh collider, and call the shared mesh and assign our mesh. And lastly, we need to recalculate our normals. Now we can go into the update function and within this, this is where we're going to call for our deformation to happen. So first and foremost, we need to create a raycast that will hit our mesh and will give us the information of where we have clicked. 
The first thing that we need is a ray cost hit, which will be our hits information. Then we need a way to be able to get the position of where our mouse position is within the game. For this, we will assign it to our ray. So here we're saying we want to go to our main camera. We want to get a screen point that's transformed to a ray and we pass in where our mouse position is. So now we need an if statement. So if we do hit something, we want to go into this if statement and execute the code within this block. So for this, we do physics.raycast, passing in our ray, then our output will be our raycast hit. And because we don't want any distance or any constraints, we can do mathf.infinity. Now within this if statement, what we need to do is loop through all of our vertices so we can compare the distance of where we've clicked to the closest vertex. So here we're basically defining a variable called V then if V is less than the length of our modified verts array, we want V to increment. Now that we have this, we can go about calculating the distance of our click and our vertex. So for this, we're going to define a vector three variable called distance. Now what we want to do is we want to go through our modified verts, every single vertex and subtract our hit point. Up here, we can also define a new variable called smoothing factor. For this, I'll simply assign it to. Now we need one more variable to be called. This is called force. Our force will be our deformation strength, taking away our hit point square magnitude. Square magnitude essentially just calculates is, is used to calculate distances. It returns a float back. Now what we need is we need another if statement. This if statement will be the condition to check the distance from our radius to the vertex that we're selecting. This will also allow us to use the radius having more points selected or less points selected. Again, we're calling on the square root magnitude, which returns a float and allows us to compare distances. Now within this, we need another if statement calling on a button to select. For this example, I'm using get mouse button zero, which is your left click, but feel free to experiment and use get key down, get mouse button down. You can use space, enter any button of your choice. Now we need to reassign our modified vertices and apply an up force or a down force multiplied by our force. So first thing we need to do is loop through our vertexes. Then we need to reassign it. We can do this by taking the current vertex position and applying a force to it and then dividing our smoothing factor. Now we've defined how to move a vertex up. We need to do the same so when we right click, we can move the vertex down. For this, I'm using input.getMouseButton again, saying if we right click, we want to go into this else if. Easiest thing to do here is simply copy across what we have up here. And instead of having a vector three up, we have a vector three down. Now, if we run this, nothing will happen. And that's because we're not calling on our recalculate mesh. We want this to be in our update function outside of any if state. So if we follow the trail and put it here, save and go into unity, make sure that our script is attached. Our radius and deformation is also set. Click play. And then within the game view, we can now move our vertexes down and up as we please. 
What's up, everybody? Uh, excuse the hoodie, you know, lockdown, no haircuts, all the hairdressers are closed. Anywho, I just wanted to say a big thank you to every single one of you who has liked, commented, subscribed, and has shared my videos. Um, at the time of recording this, we're about 95, 96 subscribers. And it's crazy to think that we're only like, what, 95, what, four or five away from 100 subscribers, which is a massive milestone for me. So at the end of this video, I just wanted to say a big thank you to every single one of you. And I do appreciate and love your faces. And thanks. Uh, before I go, probably gonna have some videos on screen so click this one to learn about i think this is episode five this is going to be about the meshes and how to procedurally generate them then if you click here this is going to be about using perlin noise to uh, change the vertices but you could basically put all this together mash it together add this in and then you have procedural terrain that you're able to edit there are still a few things that I want to get done, so I'll probably do a part two of this video. Um, it might be 7.5 or, or, or 7a, 7b. I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll figure out as, as, as we progress and we get there. But yeah, like I wanted to say, thank you very much, everybody. And I'll catch you next time.